Acme Radio and Television. Hi, I'm Gary Townsend. I'm owner and operator of Acme Radio and TV. The business was formed in 1957 and I didn't buy it until, or I didn't come in with a partner until 1972. And um, he was here for a few years and finally I bought him out because he was mostly into the older stuff and when solid state come in, he was very uncomfortable with it so I would fix all the solid state stuff along with phonographs, that was my main thing, phonographs and car radios and um, stuff like that. So we did that for years and um, then it slowly evolved into the solid state and you know then of course the flat screens. I've always specialized in um, stereos and um, you know even the old console stereo like the Magnavoxes and those things you know like the six foot long ones and um, worked on them for a while. Um, so was it located here when you started? Yes. It was. It, so opened here in 1957. Yes. In this location? In this location. Okay. And you guys had service trucks? Just had one service truck. One service truck. So was the majority of the business walk-in or was it? No, the majority of the business was, you know, just th this guy had been doing this before I, I got here. So, you know, he was... Um, he had a lot of Wilmington um, clients. He worked for um, Marlowe and Azar, which was located on Avalon and in Wilmington, Avalon and PCH. And um, so we had a lot of Hispanic customers. And so that was, when I came in, that was mainly what I, I got. And I would answer the phone for him. And um, so, and I'd pay him rent and that's how we had got going. And then the name got around that there was somebody that was doing car radios and stereos. So I worked for several um, car lots, several gas stations where they would just pull the car radio out for me or the um, car lot. You know, I had a couple people that would go out in my truck and um, install car radios. And we did that for two or three um, dealerships until finally they started putting the um, nice radios OEM in the cars and so that kind of put me out and um, this was before the boombox era and um, we never did anything like that but we just basically you know did um, and we did a lot of foreign cars a lot of sports cars where we do custom jobs of hiding the speakers in places you know so they couldn't see them now it's pretty much everyday stuff they do but we were probably one of the first ones, and um, I've just been um, working at that for for several years. Um, when I had my um, father working here with me, we would do service calls. We would average about 10 service calls a day. That was back in the tube era, and um, gosh, we would put 10, 15 tubes in a set and our service call was 950 and um, you know we would do the 10 a day and we made pretty good money but then of course you know as the solid state got more popular people started getting rid of those old consoles and um, the tube stuff finally died away and um, so I stopped doing service calls for a while um, and then oh, a few years ago my dad passed away and so I found another guy that had worked for me back 20, 30 years ago. And so he started doing my service calls. So that's what we're doing right now. And um, so $9.50 just to show up. Just to show up. $9.50. And then so you'd put 10 to 15 tubes in a set, huh? At what was the price of the tubes in five to ten dollars? Yeah, they were they were probably five to ten dollars. Maybe horizontal output tube might have been thirty dollars or something. But so the customer was probably in for a hundred bucks. Yeah, we would try to. That would be the the main objective is to get it all taken care of and change even the the weak ones or whatever we could. 
And of course, we'd give them a rough estimate first to make sure they wanted to agree to that, and um, you know, go from there. So, how much walk-in business was there? There wasn't a whole lot of walk-in business. Um, I was still getting a lot of stereos in and car radios in, and. Um, you know, there was a few televisions, and I would get a lot of the big consoles, and you know, um, um, but um, we did a lot of service calls. And then back then, my mom would answer the phone when me and my dad went out on the service calls. So talk about the the way that television service changed and how it's evolved into the disposable culture we have now. So when did when did uh, when did tube sets pretty much when do you think your last tube set was that you worked on? Well, I still get them occasionally. I mean I work I still work on amplifiers and not I'm, not CR well okay. Not 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 as in classic or vintage, but as in a daily watcher for somebody's primary set. Yeah, that's been quite some time ago. I can't rec recall that exactly, but it would probably be um, a good 20 years, something like that. For the tube stuff. For the tube stuff, yeah. Because we used to go through like certain numbers of tubes. We'd go through 10 a week of that, you know, like six GH8s or, you know, some of the horizontal output tubes. and. You know, back then, all the um, parts places delivered your parts to your shop two to three times a day. And so that just shows you how much volume you had of these vacuum tubes in the TVs. I mean, people wanted their TVs fixed and they wanted them now. And if you, had, if you could get out there and you had the stuff right on you, because um, that's when we had the tube caddies just loaded full of tubes and the truck had three or four of those in there. So we'd pretty much have any any tube we needed right on stock and then the panels started coming in that's where it evolved to next they still had vacuum tubes but Zenith made a uh, design that would just use certain plug-in modules and panels and so then we had to go to that we had to buy all the panels and then of course RCA and all the rest of the companies went to the same thing so we went through that era and then that finally phased out and so then it got to be more of the disposable type stuff where everything was on one board and you know then some people could fix them but most of the people would just say well it's not worth it you know to go into so it's it's changed into that and then now of course most all the sets are the flat screens and they're made in china and they're pretty much completely you have to replace the whole panel to um, repair them and that's what most of us what we're doing now um, you can buy them rebuilt or used over the internet but that's even d died off to nothing right yeah that's pretty much because now people go to Costco or Sam's and just replace it you know because the price is so low and they want they want their TV fixed right now and um, they don't want to mess around for you to get a part or for you to try to find a part because nothing is interchangeable hardly anymore in the panels. And, you know, it's not like with the vacuum tubes where several vacuum tubes would work in all the sets. I mean, they all had, you know, high voltage rectifiers or they all had horizontal outputs or they all had certain IF tubes that were standard through quite a, quite a few years. So we could supply, you know, have a good supply of a certain number and use that up all the time. And so basically now we still, um, we do a lot of industrial um, machine shop repairs. We do the uh, CNC boards for a lot of big machines. And um, that's kind of keeping us going. And a lot of just general maintenance stuff that other people won't do. So it's, it's kind of gotten out of the electrical engineering type stuff like we used to do. Cause I do have a degree in electrical engineering, electronic engineering, and um, but that didn't work out because the the um, bottom fell out of that in the 70s, and that's when I got into my business then because 
I realized I couldn't work for TRW and I couldn't work for any of the big companies and so that's how I got into the service business like this. So cons as far as consumer electronic repair, it's dead? Pretty much. As far as modern, something modern, not something vintage that someone wants restored for a specific right. reason? Pretty, pretty much that stuff is dead and now what they're doing is a lot of the radios are made by the manufacturers not to be repaired and you send it back into them and they refurbish it and send it back to you for 50 bucks or 100 bucks or something. And that's like the, um, the Sirius XM radios and the, um, the little Bose stereos and stuff like that. That's um, pretty much non-repairable by a service company like, such as me. Okay, so what what is the future of this operation here? Well, we're not really sure at this point. I'm just trying to um, I'm trying to survive from being in a severe accident, and um, I'm just getting back to work. And everybody thinks that I can't do it anymore, and so they're um, trying to talk me into getting rid of it. And, um, retiring. Retiring. And I'm 64 years old and I don't feel like retiring. And I, I do believe, you know, for my rehab, I need to come to a place like this and have something to do every day because otherwise I'll drive myself crazy. So I can't see much future for it um, more than a year or so. So, you know, that's what my plan is now. We'll see how it goes, though. Everything's up to, you know, question. You know you're one of the last shops left. Yeah. Right? Right. How many other shops are left? I don't know of too many. Do you know of any? Well, there's Brent TV on Crenshaw. Brent TV is gone. Okay, well, it's, they're gone then. You know. Brent TV had a roll-off in front of it about six months ago, and it's gone. So Brent TV is gone, so... That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Name another one. Yeah, I don't, I don't know of anybody. I really and truly don't. It, 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 it kind of the peak of the TV repair, let's say the early 80s, how many of these shops were in business in this area? Uh, I would say six to eight. Just in this immediate area? In, in Lamita, in Lamita Torrance area. Okay. Maybe more. And they've all, all one, one by one. There was two or three on this street before. <laughs> you know, there was one right across the street. Right. And so it's just a dying, a dead. A dead. A dead uh, industry. We, and we, that's why I diversify so much in doing everything that I can, you know, just to make a few bucks. Yeah, I think you are the last, man. You are the last. Okay, tell us about this. This is actually, a customer actually brought this in for repair. Yes, this, this one here is a Samsung. Uh, and it happens to be a 19, uh, made in July of 1990, or that's when the schematic was printed. And of course, we have all the schematics for these eras. And he had somebody passed away that had given it to somebody, and so he wanted it fixed. He liked the style. It's actually not a bad TV. It's a stereo TV, which was, um, you know, for these type of TVs, stereo wasn't quite that popular yet. So we've had to put a new flyback transformer in and do some other work, and so it's still a project. But this is one of those rare cases where somebody actually wants to right. yeah, have a CRT set working. Yes, and the same thing too, which I don't know if Dan's going to put it in any of the newspaper article that I did, but I have a lot of customers that only like CRTs or only like black and white TVs because they say they can see them better or they... I've even had people say that the color TVs have evil spirits in them and they don't want one in their house. And so, 
most people I fix their black and whites for them and they, they're happy. And, um, so there are people who still only have black and white TVs yes. today in yes. 2017. 2017 today I have maybe two customers that's in my customer base. That's my Sencore generator back when I bought it that was a must have because you needed to have for, the, for working on tubes and transistors and back in that day the top oscilloscope was $5,000 and the bottom generator was $2,800 and um, Sencore would make you let you make payments on it so I made payments for five or six years <laughs> finally had it all right so tell me about that where was it it was located right on the corner of the bench right here we bolted down you can see a picture of it it's underneath the counter here okay and um, for people to come in and they would have me check their tubes and um, that's the tube checker yes so this is n people that were too lazy to go to the grocery store yeah right so i would i would look it up on the charts there and we would get new charts every so many months to, so we'd be updated on the new tubes and, and, but it stayed there for years and years and I finally took it off so talk about your talk about your um, newspaper article here they did that they ran that a couple times and I just got tons and tons and tons of business from it and then they had people writing and wanting to know wanting to you know where I was at, and but somebody came in and he just said, "I want to do an article on you," and he called it the old black magic, and then he, you know, just took a picture of me fixing a, one of those piece of shit TVs. Did you ever work on many of those TVs? They were really popular back when I was the the fifties. Uh, there you go. All right, this is Gary's mom, so mm -hmm. tell us how Gary uh, got into this place. So when Gary was quite young, we had to have our TV fixed. So we had Lou, the owner of uh, the TV shop, come over to fix it. So he, uh, Gary was interested in watching him. So he said, uh, Lou said, uh, well, how about you coming over? A lot of people like their music through Christmas. So uh, he had Gary come over and fix some of the record players and different things like that. For Christmas, and so, and so then it uh, kind of went on to the part where uh, he had Gary do a little more, and then eventually Gary come in the shop and ran in one little area of it, and uh, and from then on he's been in the TV shop for well over 50 years. But it's time to say goodbye. All right, we are EOLing Acme Electronics. What month is this? November. November. So we have basically one month. And um, of course, we recorded a video on documenting this place at the beginning of the year. And I'm over here kind of filling this box up for trash and then taking what I think I'll be able to use. I'm running out of space at home too, so I've kind of real limited on uh, what I can take. Did you just stock all this NTE stuff, or were these all com common failures? You just had them in stock? What's all this knob, knob, Taiwan, diode, transistor, popular failure RCA parts? What do we have here? Reason. Oh, how neat, yeah. 
Oh, dynamic recorder microphone. I think we can get that into the dumpster as quick as possible. How does that make you feel, Gary, to see that? Not good, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Not good? No. A lot of work getting all those little boxes in there and the, all the little parts and all the little TVs I fixed. It's all gone. Can't do it anymore. All right, I just pulled. This is. This was here in 1950-something? Mm hmm Okay, so yeah, let's, let's get the audio on this. Hold on. Of course, it's not going to work now. Is the closed thing locked? This? Yeah, right there. I think the bell is kind of dirty, Gary. Anyway, I just pulled this battery testing thing out. Somebody wants this, Union Carbide, and I guess this is a customer can test their batteries. Yep. Oh, this is when batteries used to be good. They used to have mercury in them. Anyway, I love this right here. Well, effective 1985, so this is not that old. Well, I'm sure they had update charts for pricing. You remember ITC Electronics? Uh -huh. I worked there when I was in high school. Wow. And we actually used to have a lot of these batteries. There's a look at a old school battery countertop display Union Carbide. Try to clean this off a little bit. All right, so we got to close our video out here. You ready? So what about, there's still a lot of stuff here, Gary. I know, it needs two people to get this over to my house. Is he coming by this morning? Yeah, it should be by sometime. Like when? I don't know, I'd be calling. And then there's all these you want all these plastic things here too? Yeah, I guess I'll take them and look through them. How about this right here? I thought you probably wanted it. Okay. So do we just want to just go after the dumpster and all that again right now? Well, the dumpster's probably pretty full after breaking the desk up there. Oh, shit. Someone's going to come and get these tables. I might take one more, but someone's going to come and get them, right? Yeah. Yeah, this, this is some of those stickers that you, you always see on the back of TVs. Old equipment. All right, today's December 30th. And, uh... You realize when we first videoed this place, it was about January 30th. So it looks a little bit different now. And basically one day left. He took the sign down and I wanted to get some video of the sign. Well, 
So Acme TV and Radio Repair will cease to exist January 1st, 2018, right? Basically, the business just has dropped off to the point where it doesn't even pay the rent anymore. This is stuff I'm taking. This is uh, a lot of the other stuff. So what year did this shop open here? 1957. And when the name of it was Acme Radio and TV? So Acme Radio and TV, 1957 to 2018. I'll check into it. I appreciate the call. What was it? Update your Google listing? Update my Yelp. They said I've got a negative review on my Yelp. 